David Menzies for Rebel News here in Scarborough, Ontario. Well, folks, I'm taking in the awards night put on by the Coalition of Concerned Manufacturers and Businesses Canada. Their um, top award recipient is former Vice Admiral Mark Norman. He won, justifiably so, the Truth to Power Award. And I did try to get uh, Mr. Norman for an interview. Unfortunately, he didn't have the time. However, I found an ex-liberal MP that wanted to speak with me. Now, before you start booing and hissing, folks, I think you're going to like what this ex-liberal MP has to say. I am now with Dan McTague, ex-liberal MP, and now a tireless advocate for the development of Canada's oil and natural gas sectors. I think you bring a very unique perspective to this debate. You were a liberal MP for so many years. What is your take that this Justin Trudeau Liberal Party is obsessed about climate change, carbon emissions, carbon taxes. It seems to be the only thing on their agenda. Do you even recognize your old party anymore? Well, I don't, of course, and many of the liberals of my generation don't recognize this as the liberal party, a party of the center, a party that was pragmatic, that would take into account all arguments before you know, le le uh, lurching ahead, leaping ahead. Uh, with uh, with policies that I think uh, at the end of the day neither achieve their carbon objectives, their Paris Agreement, uh, a climate agreement, uh, nor does it uh, do anything more than frustrate Canadians into the belief that what this is is a, a, a not so subtle uh, slate of hand to try to take money out of people's pockets. We saw the same group that has taken over and around Mr. Trudeau, uh, who did their uh, their really their dirty work here in Ontario and drove energy prices to double and even triple what they were in just 10 years. That's an experiment that has now been foisted on policymakers in Ottawa. It's one of the main reasons why I think you're seeing uh, the Liberal Party take the view today that uh, it's okay to tax people into oblivion, while at the same time not recognizing that our natural gas, our ethically produced oil, is in fact a solution not just to climate change or to concerns about emissions here in Canada, but more importantly, in places like India and China, which are lining up to get Canadian access to Canadian energy, but cannot because we have environmental uh, activists stopping the building of pipelines, preventing us from getting to market. And now we have the Michael Bloombergs of this world and the Mark Carneys of this world going around saying, we're going to ensure that your companies don't have money to be able to continue the prosperity here in Canada. Let me leave you with this. Anybody who thinks it's, a, it's, it's, it's not a big deal only has to think of the value of the Canadian dollar versus the U.S. currency. We are trading our dollar at one-third uh, one discount. Every commodity that we buy is priced in U.S. terms. It means that your ability to afford our purchasing power is out the window. As president of the Canadians for Affordable Energy, that's unacceptable. It was unacceptable for me to see this happen to Canadians when I was a member of Parliament, bringing in two energy rebates. It's not any more acceptable today, and I think the Liberals should change their ways, if not... I think the public will move them uh, out of uh, office fairly soon. And Dan, you said the E word, ethical. Of course, our rebel commander, Ezra Levant, wrote the book on that, Ethical Oil. And um, it, it is absolutely staggering. I'm trying to get my head around this, and I want your take on it. We have a situation right now in Canada where the carbon tax is applied to the Canadian-sourced ethical oil, but oil coming from Saudi Arabia... It doesn't have that put on it. Uh, my colleague, Kian Bexley, tried to ask the, uh, the Environment and Climate Change Minister the reason why. Did not get an answer. What is going on here, Dan? This used to be a party that really cared about Canadians, that cared about their ability to make ends meet, that really wanted to be objective when it came to looking at and assessing these things. Look, I went down this road in 2008 with Stéphane Dion. Most people knew that the idea of taxing carbon was a ridiculous idea then. It's no better today. But when it comes to our oil, that could easily be shipped from east to west, and a pipeline that currently exists, the Energy East pipeline that earlier this evening Patrick Moore was referring to, uh, is two-thirds built. The fact that it stops at the Quebec border is, 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 in my view, unacceptable, especially given that it is a province that, whether they like it or not, collects $13 billion, much of it derived from, ironically, the very resources that they, they lament. No t discussion about the, uh, the fact that we reversed uh, the Line B, not Line 9 pipeline, which Quebec gets about 12 to 15 percent of its oil from heavy oil, oil sands uh, production through that pipeline. Uh, to me, there's a lot of inconsistency, and when it comes down to, uh, say, where the, uh, the party and the government stands on these kind of issues, uh, it seems to me it, it, it's absolutely outrageous that a country would allow 
international uh, foreign oil have come, come from other areas, including the United States, uh, when in fact we have plenty in our own backyard. And yet it is, we have a situation, don't we, Dan, where it's pipeline paralysis. We have perhaps trillions of dollars of mineral wealth underground. It can't get to market. Is this all about, at the end of the day, virtue signaling by this Trudeau Liberal government? I think it's ignorance to begin with, uh, and it's hoping that people, you can prey on the public's in ignorance. I think people will understand this when they see that the federal government is bringing forth not only higher carbon taxes. If Ecofisc and all the other trendies uh, in the in the in, in certain you know <laughs> Laurentian elites decide that they want to go to two hundred and ten dollars uh, a ton, I can tell you that the cost of your natural gas will go up by probably a thousand dollars a year. I can tell you that you will wind up uh, you know not being able to get uh, transportation, whether that's to and from work or for whatever the case may be to get our kids to school. We're not there yet. And so what the federal government is trying to do, what the federal liberals are doing, amounts to uh, a lot of rather ingenious in, 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 in respects to their policies. I think you're looking at uh, policies that aren't going to work for Canadians at the end of the day. And worse, when the federal government brings at the end of this year the new clean fuel standards, imposing standards on refineries that is imposed nowhere in the world except British Columbia, I think Canadians had best be prepared for a much higher cost of living, a cost of living they can't afford. Uh, you know, I, I guess I find myself uh, at a loss as to uh, why one would call this the Liberal Party. It's not a pragmatic party. These are not policies that are going to help uh, Canadians uh, either now or down the road. And trying to be the International Boy Scouts on suspicious policies that are really being driven by uh, you know, an agenda that I think uh, is both pernicious to the country and irrelevant to the goal of climate change is uh, likely to lead to uh, consequences that are going to be harsh for Canadians. I think Canadians in Eastern Canada will start to pay a little bit more attention when they see that the cost of living, and I'm not just talking about the cost of fuel, but as it makes its way through the economy, think here of the cost of groceries, uh, greater insolvencies, all things that I don't want to see happen, but are going to happen under the watch of this government because Canadians seem to have given this guy a pass to do anything he wants, and frankly, I knew him in the House of Commons. Uh, I didn't think he was a very strong uh, personality. Uh, he has a great name, wonderful hair, but a lousy prime minister with a very uh, significantly uh, uh, deleterious uh, economic policy. And one last question, you're out of politics now. You now head up something called Gas Wizard. What in the world is Gas Wizard? Uh, <laughs> done, there's been several iterations of my gas price predictions. As you know, uh, uh, David, going back uh, some 20, 25 years when we fought the oil industry uh, as far as competition was concerned, I never, by the way, set out to kill the industry. I set out to make it more competitive, unlike the environmentalists and the uh, climate changers who want to kill the industry in its entirety. No, uh, Gas Price Wizard is really a, a, a Twitter account that allows people to know when there's going to be a price increase. The, right, the price has been relatively flat of late, save and except the federal government's carbon taxes, but come back to me on April 1st when they go up two and a half cents a litre. Dan, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. You're my kind of liberal, and uh, good luck with your new endeavor uh, with the Gas Price Wizard organization. Appreciate that, David. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again, my friend. Hey, folks, if you like the kind of news we bring you here at Rebel News, then become a premium content subscriber. Go to premium.rebelnews.com and never miss another Rebel story.